Hello, my beautiful, magical friends, my family, my confidants. Welcome to this waning crescent reading for the collective. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. There's lots to celebrate. But there's also a feeling of feeling somber. Hence the black and white. Also, um, if you uh, found your way to this page, if you're new, welcome. For those of you who keep coming back, thank you. And for those of you who are brave enough to walk this path with us, thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sending me the love and the prayers. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. This is the month of gratitude in real time. Today is November 20th, 2022. Ooh, I just realized six, eight, ten. Ooh, it's a number 11 day. That's wonderful. Let me see. Let me make sure. Two, four, six, seven, eight. Oh, no. Is it a 10? Oh, no, it's a 10, isn't it? Because let's see. It's the 20th. So 11 is 2, right? 1 and 1 is 2. And then it's the 20th is 2. That's 4. And then 2022 is 6. So it's 10. Ooh, it's completion. Oh my goddess. We have so much to talk about. Seriously, strap in because it's going to be one hell of a ride. We, I know for sure that we are talking with the spirit animals. I know that we are talking with the fairies. And I absolutely positively for sure know that we are talking about miracles. We're going to work with my deck as well to get some clarifiers. Um, there were three songs that came to me as I was putting this together. And the first one was uh, Don't Do Me Like That by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And then the next one was Soul Kitchen by The Doors. But the year it was, it said 2017 remastered. And if you add 2017, it's also 10. So completions, I mean, come on. And then the last one was number three was This Universe. It's a meditation. All of the links for this music and the meditation will be in the description box below. If you've never been here, um, always check out the description box. There are more little breadcrumbs for you to go and find out more information about yourself, especially when we do the mass readings. If you're called to an angel number, an animal, whatever it is, if it's um, the song, the music, the lyrics, research it, look it up. I promise you, you will retain the information more if you do it yourself. Um, so yeah, so thank you for being here. Thank you for coming back. I'm just, I'm in gratitude. We're in gratitude month, right? It's November. It's the month of gratitude, but also I am in gratitude to the moon because we are right here in the rest and restore phase, number eight, the last cycle of the moon phase. There are eight moon phases a month. The next one is the new moon, which is over here, new beginnings, you know, but in the meantime, we're trying to rest up from the moon that we had. And let's, let's go through that, shall we? Let's do a little recap of the moon in Scorpio. And for those of you who don't know, I am a triple Sag and my moon is in Scorpio. So starting Scorpio season until the end of Sag, end of Sag season is my time. Also 3037 and 3038. When I call out numbers, uh, they'll be below for you to research um, on your own uh, angel numbers. Okay, so Scorpio season started on October 23rd. And in that time, we we're in eclipse season because the new moon in Scorpio, the partial solar eclipse was two days later. Then we had Samhain slash Halloween, Dios de los Muertos, right? And then we had, um, for those of us who change our clocks, we had daylight savings time. For those who live in the United States, I don't know about anywhere else on their election, we had election day and a full moon total lunar eclipse. Yeah. So here we are <laughs> at the end of that. Thank you, water. Thank you, water energy. Thank you, Phoenix. Thank you, Eagle. Thank you, Scorpion. Thank you for reminding us of who we are for the Scorpio energy. Thank you, blessed Scorpio. We love you so much. You know, maybe I'm a little partial. I love my Scorpios. 
One of my best friends growing up was a Scorpio. And it's funny when I, I'm now I'm like, God, I'd really love to know like my friends and family's charts more now, you know, because I think certain things would make more sense because we were like two peas in a pod. And it was like, we were almost like creepy little twins. <laughs> she actually wrote characters about us. Um, <laughs> she's a phenomenal writer. And long story short, <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. They're a Scorpio. And happy 50th birthday to Lisa. She turned 50 on November 18th, 2022. Um, but little did I know at the time that I was a moon in Scorpio. No wonder why we got along so well. I don't know what's in their chart. You know, it's like my husband. He's a triple Gemini, but his moon is in Sagittarius. Well, oh, and we're polar opposites of each other, you know, but all this shit makes sense. Who's in your life? What are they bringing to the table? What are they adding? What are they peppering in? What, are the, what beauty and sunshine and love are they bringing into your life? What darkness, what shadow are they making you face and see? The full moon in Scorpio is powerful because Scorpios do not fuck around. They don't mince words. And I'm glad that my moon's in Scorpio because it's emotions. Because even though I can cut a bitch with my fucking tongue so hard, I can tell you right now, and that sounds really dark and hee <laughs> hee a little dirty, but, um, but, but you know what I'm saying? I could, but... I am learning that it's like, you know what? That doesn't make you more powerful. Being mean and hateful, cutting people down, bullying people. It only brings down your energy. It's not helpful. Envy, jealousy. Scorpio moon, man, the fucking unleashed a lot of shit for a lot of us. Please feel free to, you know, share below. And thank you to all of you um, who are out there. And I know that you don't want to come forward. That's okay. You're incognito. That's okay. I love you. You're welcome here. You know, I always say everyone is welcome here if they are coming here for the greatest and highest good of all. All are welcome here if they are coming for the greatest and highest good of all. All are welcome here. If they are coming in for the greatest and highest good of all. We are all. We are one. So, man, I like that it was just three songs. And it was just, you know, the two expressions of the, the first two songs were really powerful. So we're going to dig into that and then we'll get into some cards. Um, but I do love that today is the last day of Scorpio season. Tomorrow is the beginning of Sagittarius season. In a few days, we have the new moon in Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is just a beautiful, it's awesome. Not just because it's mine I and, and you know, I relish in it or whatever. But it's the holiday season, especially where I grew up. Um, it's a really beautiful, it's like the gateway to whatever you believe in. It's not even about religion. I just feel like no matter where you are in the world, I feel like Sagittarius season is like, da 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 da, da let's all have a great time. You know, like party on Wayne, party on Garth. You know what I mean? Like everybody just fucking get along. Let's just have a good time. Like fucking kumbaya. When I was growing up as a kid, oh my gosh. Uh, speaking of my friend who I just uh, was telling you about Lisa, they won most colored personality in school. And what that meant was that they got along with everybody. And I remember they won that. And I was like, that seemed more like me. I was a little jealous and angry. I was like, why didn't I get that one? Or most popular or something. I was such a little brat. And, um, the, the, the interesting thing of it all is I won best storyteller and I didn't understand at the time. Cause at the time, you know, they always have a, a male and female version, at least when I was growing up in seventies and eighties in school, you know, hopefully they don't do that anymore. Cause that's like, it shouldn't be about sex or race or color. You know what I mean? Or if you have money or not, whatever, who fucking cares? But anyway, you, you get what I'm saying. But back then, it was like the male version, the counterpart in my category, their nickname was Eric the Bullshitter. So they were known for being a bullshitter because they were like, dude, bullshit. That didn't fucking happen. Now, some of Eric's stories were true. Some of them, I think, were bullshit. Just like most of my stories were true, but I might have embellished a little bit because also at the time I saw the world through my eyes, through my, because, you know, I just assumed everybody could hear, you know, everybody's thoughts or whatever. Like I knew that they couldn't, but yet I still felt like there were times I would look at my friends and be like, what am I thinking? <laughs> you know, I was always like trying to play like parlor tricks with my friends or like, let's guess numbers or just stupid shit like that. 
um, because I was just trying to test the waters and see if there were other freaks, weirdos like me, because, you know, anytime I would tell my, my friends or my family that I heard, saw, felt things or whatever, they'd be like, shh, don't say that. People are going to think you're crazy. You know, grandma's on medication for that shit. Cause she said the radio was talking to her and I'm like, Oh man. So it's really time to come out of the broom closet. You guys, Scorpio showed us a lot of things. The first song was don't do me like that. I feel like some of you, I know for myself, I saw not just my part in my bullying, my shit, the things I've done to my friends and family, the things that, you know what I mean? Not only did I have to like see it up close and personal in my face and deal with it, but I also was seeing everyone else's and it was like, whoa, like what the fuck, man? Like, this is a dark fucking place. Like, I couldn't even, I going to the stores was starting to be painful. Even the farmer's market and, like, and like people that I love. You know, during the eclipse season, I was like, ooh, man, there's some fucking dark shit of brewing here. It was like, I feel like this storm was coming in, you know? So, um, you know, for me, I feel like this eclipse season really showed me so much. And I feel like the new moon in Sagittarius is going to be like a breath of fresh air. And we will have new beginnings. We'll set new intentions. The holidays will revive us 1114 and 1115. Or they won't. You know what I mean? And if they don't, then lean into it. Lean into the pain and the suffering. If you go home and somebody triggers you or if something happens, lean into that motherfucking suffering. I know it's hard. I've been there. I faced it. I went in to my family twice. Two weddings. One year. You know, like 14 months apart. Man, it was fucking rough as fuck, but I did it, 1141 and 1143, because I had to go in there. I had to try and see it, you know, and even now I'm like, it would be different even now if I went there, you know, because I'm not the same person that I was that many years ago, but I'm glad that I faced my demons. I'm glad that I faced my fears. I had to see it, and I think the interesting thing was I didn't realize until years later that I think my friends and family had to see it too, like certain behavioral patterns that were happening between us or the way that they would be in front of me. And then they'd be like, do you think that's blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, what do you think it is? You know? And they're like, well, if you're asking me, that means it's true. <laughs> and I was just like, you know what? I was just like fucking, it was like Gandalf. I was like on 24 seven, both times I went home for a month and it was like 60 days within 14 months of a lot of intense work for myself and them. But you know what? I'm so fucking glad I did it. And I love them and I miss them. And I really hope we all reconnect again someday. But, you know, if this holiday season, if you're not feeling it, you know, spirits saying channel the dragon. This is a beautiful old altar cloth that has this dragon. I think it could be many things, but I see it as a dragon. Sometimes I see it as a unicorn. Um, but channel the dragon energy. The dragons are here for you. They are totally here for you. And I will put in uh, the de description box below dragon spirit animal medicine for you to research. You know, also, um, if you look on here, this is a, a nice little dish for the ancestors being in gratitude, saying thank you. You know, I put this here as like a pointer <laughs> to the waxing crescent. Actually, I should probably do this here because it looks like taking action instead. Let me see if I can do it. You get the gist. There we go. Waning Crescent. <laughs> go here. <laughs> I love you, spirit. Um, yeah, it's just time. It's time for a glow up too for some of you. I heard from spirit and the glow up is on this new moon. They're actually, I know that we don't normally like double up like this. Um, and it could be because uh, the new moon in Sagittarius, maybe, I don't know, they're going to have me do something else, but I knew they wanted me to do this one today because they want me to do something tomorrow for the Sagittarius season. And then we've got the new moon in Sagittarius on Wednesday. Then in the U.S. we've got a uh, great gratitude day. Um, I could say killing people in humans day, but that's a little graphic. Um, anyway, you know, so don't forget to do Green Friday, by the way. I'm going to keep talking about it. It's Green Friday. The day after Thanksgiving is Green Friday. Not go spend a bunch of money, trample people, kill people for a fucking television. It's go outside. Do you know that it is free to go anywhere in the United States the day, on that day? Anywhere. Any, any state park you can go that requires a pass is open 
And they did that deliberately so that people, instead of shopping and terrorizing the planet with more fucking shit, they were like, why don't we go out into nature instead after eating all that food and gratitude and look at how blessed we are that we even have some place to come together and eat. And you know what I mean? So in this rest and restore energy, they want you to just chill. You don't have to run to the stores. You don't have to, you know, right now, my partner's out and getting um, some fresh fruits and vegetables and some other food because tomorrow morning we're getting up early and we've got one more place to go and then we're done and we don't have any shopping. We won't have any places that we have to go um, after that because it gets crazy. People get crazy. And if they're still staying in the matrix where they're like, they have to go by their jobs and whatever, it's like people freak out and they get crazy about food and like, it just gets nuts. So please don't feed into that energy. The fairies want to talk to us first. Don't feed into that energy. They're saying like the fairies like are hardcore and the black and white was because they want us to stay neutral during this energy. And the don't do me like that is like, we saw it. We saw like what we were doing to people, what other people were doing to us. And we didn't like it, did we? We were like, mm, I don't like being treated like that. And I'm kind of an asshole sometimes. You know, I shouldn't have talked to that person like that or treated them like that. And, you know, it's not all about me and, you know, but it's, it's easy when we're in eclipse energy to get really wrapped up in our ego. So, um, the next one, soul kitchen, I think is really interesting because that's the doors and the band is called the doors, but I almost feel like spirit saying like, this is the time now each moon cycle, we get to walk through a brand new door into an abyss. It's black here. There's nothing in there. You can't see anything. It's an abyss. It's all brand new. You have no idea what's going to happen. You can set brand new intentions, whatever. Even if it's just, I want to have the best holiday season I've ever had. And then allow the universe to gift you. Be open. Because I'm going to do that. I like that. I'm going to steal that one, I think, for him. Well, we can all use it. It's for all of us. But I'm like, oh, I like that instantly. You know why? Because when we allow them to do it, and we allow them to bless us. And, you know, it's like, it's going to go better than we can possibly imagine. You know, the other day I found these two, I know it's black and white, but in my middle fingers here, I found these beautiful turquoise rings, gorgeous, vintage, um, got them both for $13 and 50 cents. My birthday's on December 13th. And, um, on my 50th birthday, it, if, if you guys know from last year, it was kind of shitty. It was like one of the worst birthdays I ever had ever. And it's okay because I felt like that was an odd, but yet perfect way, oddly perfect way to like walk into my fifties into a brand new decade. You know, I'm half a century old. I'm like, wow. It's like all of a sudden it's like, I didn't realize what it meant. And now that I'm coming up on 51, I think the most powerful thing I gained in, and it'll, it's different for everybody, but for my generation, I swear to God, it's as if I can turn around now and go fuck off. I'm 50 years old. I'm fucking half a century, motherfucker. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me who I am, who I'm not, who I should be. This is who I am. And I may change and evolve. And I may become that thing you, you think I am. Who knows? But it's like all of a sudden you just become this, at least I did. I felt like I just became this authority of myself where I was just like, you know what? I've lived 50 years. That's a long time. I watched something earlier with um, uh, Lauren Graham and Kelly Clarkson and Kelly Clarkson said something so beautiful about like what a privilege it is to be, you know, to, she's like, I feel privileged to be able to have lived these many years. Like there's a lot of people that don't get that privilege, you know, in this time. And it's like, it was just so gracious and so real. And I thought that's so true. So I found these rings and I gave them to my husband. I cleaned them up and I gave them to him, blessed him and all that. And I said, give these to me, one for my birthday, one for Christmas. That's it. You don't have to buy me anything. You know, we're, you know, in the process of buying this house and remodeling this house. And it's just, there's so much going on all the time and it's overwhelming. And I don't want us to stress out about gifts and that. It's like, you know, my birthday is literally 12 days before Christmas. So, you know, that's a lot of pressure when you have so many other things going on. So then today, or yesterday, in the uh, love and relationships reading, the pick a reading, I was alluding to that at the beginning, but I forgot. Check that out. I'll put it in the description box below if you're new here. Um, um, if you've already been here, you may know that already. And you've seen it and watched it. But anyway, long story short, uh, it was like a love language, interesting reading for the tribe. I don't do many love readings like that. They're like once in a blue moon. <laughs> 
Um, but no, it was just, it was intense. I, I was drawn to wear them. And then I told my husband last night, I go, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm like really drawn to wear these rings right now. And turquoise are about love. I go, it makes sense with the love reading. I'm like, is that okay? He's like, yeah. And then today spirits, like they are your gifts to you from us. Like they're for you. It was $13 and 50 cents because we're sorry that on your birthday on the 13th last year, when you turned 50, Ooh, when I looked down, it was 20, exactly 20 minutes. Ooh, the number two. Um, and look, I got two rings. How crazy. And two turquoise. Cause I was like, that's a little gluttonous. I don't need two. And they were like, yes, you do. You do. And I was trying them on and I was like, how much are they? And I thought that was the size was six and 6.5. I thought they were, that was the size. <laughs> and then I was like, she's like, no, 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 that's $6. I was like, what? I'm like, okay, I'm getting both. Um, but anyway, long story short, it's okay to love on ourselves. Like, I feel like spirit was like, Hey, happy birthday, moon, moon and Scorpio, Sagittarius, baby, happy birthday. You made it through one of the hardest fucking years of your life. Not only did you live, but you still have a smile on your face. Congratulations. You made it out of the dark night of the soul. You know, I was like, Oh shit. But it's still lingering and things are still going to come up. You know, we have eclipse season every six months for a reason. We need to embrace these eclipse seasons, embrace the retrograde season. There's another retrograde season. Uh, Mercury is going into retrograde um, once again, <laughs> like it does at the end of December, uh, right after Christmas, I believe. Uh, yep. On the 28th, December 28th. And it goes direct on January 18th. But look at them as blessings, right? There's a lot of stuff that has been coming through from spirit. So the other thing about the um, soul kitchen from the doors, they're getting back to that, is that it's about getting back to yourself. The soul kitchen is for not just the kitchen witches, but for those of you who are like, I can't cook, I can't bake. Spirit's like, yes, you can. Challenge yourself. Start slow. Ask friends, family, people that you know that cook and bake and ask them to help you. Ask them to give you tips. Start watching. Maybe you watch food stuff. And, you know, a lot of these like great, great uh, British baking, bake off or whatever, like those shows, um, you know, I know some stuff is fabricated and whatever, but it is really cool to watch people make their own recipes or how they do things. And they learn from each other. We all learn from each other. So the soul kitchen, I feel like is for us to get back into the food and what we put into our bodies and to like, you know, over this holiday season, indulge and have fun, but also take care of yourself. You know, Alder and I've been doing that. And like, now he's like, I'm like, just get a fucking plethora of fruits and vegetables. We kind of, we got some food for Thanksgiving <laughs> and, uh, we, we, we just went a little too crazy. We didn't save as much as we thought we would. Um, and so instead of beating ourselves up, I'm like, let's just like, you know, do a cleanse and blah, blah, blah. So I'm excited actually, because my body feels like shit. I'm not allowing it to take over my body. Cause before I'd be like, eh, eh, sugar is like taking over like poison. But now I just realized, you know what? Fuck. My body's like, hell yeah, man. That's like some good ass fucking uh, toffee bark. Like I need to eat more of that. Yes, please. But it's interesting how I just couldn't. Like my body was just like, I will hurl. Like literally, like do not put any more shit in me. And, um, and uh, I don't mean to be graphic, but seriously, I was just like, I was like really intense and Alder and I were like, okay, yeah, like we need to do a cleanse and like eat really healthy for a few days. And then on Thanksgiving, we'll have fun again. And then, you know, and then cleanse again. And it's like my birthday. Then it's like, you know, Yule and then Christmas and New Year's. And it's like, there's a lot of stuff that we celebrate, you know? Um, so yeah, don't deprive yourself. Just be mindful of what you're eating. And, you know, if you like a certain dish, but you know how to make the healthy version of it. Like, you know, maybe, you know, Aunt Stephanie loves to make her sweet potatoes, you know, with marshmallows or whatever. Well, then make your version of homemade yams and use maple syrup. You know, it doesn't have to. I know the marshmallows are the best part. Then fine. They do have like organic marshmallows and certain, you know, or like a healthier version of it. Oops, this one flew out. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, and bring that too and just say, hey, I, this is my version of it. And you're not being a dick. You're just saying like, this is how I eat. Or I've done that. I've gone to dinner parties and I bring versions of my food and people are like, wow, that's really good. What do you mean? There's no dairy in that. Or there's no meat in that. And I'm like, nope. You know, and, and it also helps people to educate themselves better on food because some people it's okay to eat meat if that, if your body requires that, but you also need a balance. You know, we were raised to believe that we need meat with every, you know, you need meat and potatoes and a vegetable. It's like, no, you don't, you know, but some people do like every so often, 
my body craves a certain animal like dairy, goat cheese, like things like that, and I let it have it, then I have it for a little, you know, whatever. I work through my body. I have apple cider vinegar, water, and clean out my system, you know? So it's just, it's really just about balance and like eating like whole oats and like, you know, going back to eating real foods, making your foods from scratch. I had him um, go and get some popcorn today. So I was like, you know what? I know we love our organic chips and stuff and our, you know, veggie chips, but I was like, I can make homemade popcorn from organic, you know, corn, and it's going to be like the most delicious food ever, you know? Okay, enough. So the Empress, number three. And look at that. Look at their beautiful outfit. Look at their beautiful dress. And look, there's a little baby in there too. Because at first I thought it was like a gnome or something, you know, because my eyesight's not that great. And it says, time to take action. The power of creativity, success that allows for a life of luxury. Sorry about that. So interesting that we're in the rest and restore phase of the waning crescent, but the card that came out is about um, taking action. But you know what I got from spirit? Look at that. They did that because they're like, this could be anybody. This is the birth of a creation. This is something about you guys. All of us are here to channel some type of amazing creation and the new moon in Sagittarius. And I feel like, ooh, and I feel, girl, um, I feel like that is them trying to say to us, uh, that it's time for us to take action with our creativity. Like, what do we love doing? You know, people make money on all different formats and in all different forms. People make money from their art, you guys. It's, it, you know, the, the Wally worlds, as my loving uh, friends and family call it, the Walmarts of the world will, I don't know if they'll always be here. But I do know that like the smaller businesses and the smaller towns are taking their power back because they're like, you know what? That's what we loved about this place. That's why we liked it here. We didn't want to have to go to a big box store and get everything in one go. You know, some people like to go to their local, you know, uh, grocer, um, an organic, you know, farm. Some people like to go shopping in town and every store is different, you know, and there's a local cobbler that actually still fixes shoes. And some people like that very simple life. And, um, you know, you just don't know if you're thinking about moving out of a city and moving to a small, um, town and taking a risk, do it. In fact, you know what? The cottage fairy is like one of my favorite channels on YouTube. And this morning I was really inspired by their video. So I will put a link below and I highly recommend that you watch it. Uh, it's just so beautiful and watch their story, like go back and watch their story and their journey. It's really powerful. And maybe you're the opposite. Maybe you're a small town person and you're like, I always want to live in a city. She speaks of that of her sister. And I've done both now and I wouldn't trade a thing. I loved it. I lived in big cities for like 20 years. Um, I mean, I grew up on the South side of Chicago in the South suburbs, but like I was always in the city, you know, I started working downtown like 19 years old and actually no earlier than that. Cause I was doing, um, extra work and like movies and modeling and stuff. So I started working downtown when I was a teenager in Chicago and then I moved to LA and I was there for nearly 10 years, you know, and, um, and then I, you know, went back to Chicago and actually lived in the city on the north side, the south side. But then I started living in small towns too. And then I started to realize, mm, I don't, I'm, I don't want that anymore. You know, so we change as we grow and we evolve, you know, and the Empress, I mean, come on. The Empress is, is the card itself. You know, look at it, look at how opulent I'm going to go in. Also, I'm hearing like the divine feminine. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at when I take this away. Look, it was, that's why they wanted it to go there. Time to take action. And look at this, taking action first quarter moon. I couldn't make it up if I tried. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I, I love being a channel. I love my job. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey. Seriously, it's fucking rad. Um, but yeah, this goddess, this beautiful, I'm feeling this very strong divine feminine energy. So for some of you, it doesn't matter like what you liken yourself with. They're saying just channel the divine feminine energy to bring that power of creativity back to yourself. Because I'm feeling this really strong, strong vibe from spirit that, um, that that's why your creativity has been kind of turned off. I'm seeing like a valve turning off. It's because you've shut down the love, the heart chakra, right? So, um, 
in the, in that song soul kitchen what i kept hearing over and over like after it was like even the song was over and it had moved on to the next one i see he just like kind of like mantras over and over learn to forget learn to forget and he just and i don't know if i'm on the right uh note but you know what i'm saying it's like and I feel like listen to it because I feel like that's what spirit wants us to do. They want us to learn to forget about the past. Like, yes, it's a part of you. It's part of your story, but it doesn't have to be every waking minute of your story every day. And this new moon, it's like, take some time with the waning crescent energy. I'm going to go up a little bit because since we're in the rest and restore number eight, we're in the waning crescent energy. So um, we have new beginnings is the new moon in Sagittarius is, is the first phase. The second phase will be the waxing crescent that's setting intentions. And then the third phase will be taking action in the first quarter. So take this time. And I can tell you right now, uh, the first quarter moon is on November 30th. Oh, we just lost the light, but that's okay. It's perfect. Um, the first quarter moon is on November 30th and what's really cool about that is it's the second first quarter moon in the month because on the first of november we had a first quarter moon and on the 30th the last month we're going to have a first quarter moon so uh, i feel like there's a lot of magic is going to be happening so from now whenever you watch this it's timeless of course you can still utilize that energy in your meditation um, but from now on the 20th until the 30th take these 10 days to really focus on what it is that you want not what you don't want, not what you know what I mean. Don't focus on those. Just focus on what you do want. Be creative. You know, um, I'm hearing these. These want to talk to us. Not yet. Okay. Do we want any more fairy cards? Okay. Do we want any um, of my cards right now? Do we want any cards? Okay. Winning Crescent Energy. Ooh, peace. Oh my gosh. I just heard, so this is Christmas. Oh my gosh. Uh, my That friend I told you about, Lisa, come on. It's too much. It's awesome. Oh, blessed be. I love you. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the life and the lessons, all my friendships and my family. Yeah. You know what? I think it's, they're trying to tell us it's time for us to bring some peace back into our lives and into our hearts and into our souls. I mean, the fact that they played that song for me is just too much. Cause seriously, like that is like my friends, like that one I was just talking about, we don't talk anymore. Um, and that's okay. You know, our lives take us where they're meant to take us. If we're meant to wrap back around, we will. Uh, but yeah, this is really powerful. So bring peace into your heart when you're setting these intentions. Don't wish anyone ill will, no matter even, because even if you feel like somebody did something to you, you still participated. We all participated, right? We participated in that, that particular thing, that person, you know, if somebody was bullying us, then we participated, right? Cause we didn't stand up for ourselves. We didn't, you know, we didn't get away from that toxic energy. We just continued to take it. You know, it's different for everybody, 32, 35, and then 32, 36. So I think the spirit animals might want to come through uh, before we go any further. 32, 43, and then 44. Also, I'm hearing peanut butter cups. Like, it's okay to indulge yourself. Also, look, there are a lot of companies. There's um, there's so many. So just look them up. But there's a lot. If you like, like Reese's peanut butter cups, there are better versions that are much healthier for you that don't use sugar. They just use real peanut butter and like maple syrup and dark chocolate. Seriously, I make them at home all the time and they're wonderful. Ooh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm also channeling my other friend that I used to be friends with, with them, Robbie. So these are shout outs to my old, to my old peeps. Number 16, the Raven. Wow. So I cannot cover up the Empress. That would just feel wrong on multiple levels. So I'm going to bring the Raven here and put the piece here. And then we will pull out a little bit. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. My childish side is like, that's what she said. I know. It's my husband and I. We are, we are like so mature in some ways and we are like children in others. I know we are dorks. Anyway, life spiral by the Raven. Hold that thought. Okay, 3355. Wow, this is really cool and intense. And 3357. Raven, black as pitch, mystical as the moon. Speak to me of magic. I will fly with you soon. Yes, because a raven is all about magic. And in the book, it says, throughout time, raven has carried the medicine of magic. This has been true in many cultures across the planet. It is sacred in the medicine ways to honor raven as the bringer of magic. 
If the magic is bad medicine, the carrier may be honored out of fear rather than out of respect. Those who fear Raven may do so because they have been dabbling in areas in which they had no knowledge, and a spell may have backfired on them. Rather than analyzing the dark side of sorcery, realize that you will fear Raven only if you need to learn about your inner fears or self-created demons. Raven magic is a powerful medicine that can give you the courage to enter the darkness of the void, which is the home of all that is not yet in form. The void is called the Great Mystery. And the great mystery existed before all other things came into being. Great spirit lives inside the void and emerged from the great mystery. Raven is the messenger of the void. If Raven appears in your spread today, you are about to experience a change and shift in consciousness. This may involve walking inside the great mystery on another path at the edge of time. It would portend a signal brought by the Raven that says, you have earned the right to see and experience a little more of life's magic. Raven's color is the color of the void, the black hole in space that holds all the energy of the creative source. I mean, what were they saying of the creative source when we go into darkness, right? When we go into full shadow. Ooh. In native teachings, the color black means many things, but it does not mean evil. Black can mean the seeking of answers, the void, or the road of the spiritual or the non-physical. The blue-black of Raven contains an iridescence that speaks of the magic of darkness and a changeability of form and shape that brings an awakening in the process. Oh, guys, it's just getting good and good. Oh, there's more. There's more. Raven is the guardian of ceremonial magic and, and an absentia healing. In any healing circle, Raven is present. Raven guides the magic of healing and the change in consciousness that will bring about a new reality and dispel dis-ease or illness. Raven brings, in, Raven brings in the new state of wellness from the void of great mystery and the field of plenty, 36, 44, and 45. Raven is the messenger that carries all energy flows of ceremonial magic between the ceremony itself and the intended destination. For instance, if a ceremony is being performed to send energy to a disaster area where people need courage and strength, Raven would be the carrier of that energy flow and for that energy flow. The intention could be to allow the people of the devastated area to feel the concern and support of the participants in the ceremony. If you have chosen Raven, magic is in the air. Do not try to figure it out, for you cannot. It is the power of the unknown at work, and something special is about to happen. The deeper mystery, however, is how you will respond to the sparkling synchronicity of this alchemic moment. Will you recognize it and use it to further enhance your growth? Can you accept it as a gift from the Great Spirit? Or will you limit the power of the great mystery by explaining it away? It may be time to call Raven as a courier to carry an intention, some healing energy, a thought, or a message. And look at that. My husband just pulled up right when they said that. Come on, the timing. Come on. What are the odds? I love you guys so much right now. Okay, so Raven is the patron of smoke signals or spirit messages represented by smoke. So if you want to send a message to the blue road of spirit in order to contact the ancients, call the Raven. Or, who knows, the ancients may be calling you. Are they calling to you? Remember, this magic moment came from the void of darkness. And the challenge is to bring it to light. In doing so... You will, have, you will have honored the magician within. And the raven speaks again. Black as pitch, mystical as the moon, speak to me of magic. I will fly with you soon. We have one last message, 3857, and it is another mantra for us to work with until we get to the new moon in Sagittarius. And it is, I measure my success by how much fun I'm having. Exactly. Bring peace and love and light to your life.
and measure the success in your life by how much fun you're having, how many smiles you put on other people's faces. That is how we measure success, by channeling that beautiful goddess empress energy and the raven. Face your shadow, and I promise you, everything will fall into place. Because when we face our shadow, we face ourselves. And when we love ourselves and forgive ourselves fully, we can't help but love and forgive others. Because the empathy for self extends to empathy for others. We love you so much. Until next time, take good care of yourselves and each other. Blessed be. Aho.